may be a crowd, but they also make for some juicy drama. I hope you enjoy your time together! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie love triangles. I think she's a little taken with you. Wow. You can tell her my heart belongs to someone else. For this list, we're looking at films that feature notable romantic entanglements involving at least three people. And just so you know, there may be some sexy spoilers ahead, so spoiler alert. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm obviously interrupting. Uh, Darcy, what brings you here? Number 10, Indecent Proposal. Have I ever told you I love you? You know how it goes. You're in Vegas to have a good time, when all of a sudden you've lost your shirt and some billionaire is trying to buy your wife for an evening. You may not have won in Vegas, but you're a lucky man. Because I got money, I got security, I have businesses, but you have something that I just don't have. At least, that's the premise of this 90s romantic drama starring Demi Moore and Woody Harrelson. Suppose I were to offer you $1 million. for one night with your wife. I'd assume you're kidding. They play a married couple trying to strike it rich for some investment capital when Moore's character captures the fancy of a disgustingly rich gentleman played by Robert Redford. He propositions the couple, offering them a million bucks for a night with Diana. But their relationship doesn't end there. What should have been a lucrative role in the sheets leaves a woman torn between two men and with one difficult choice to make. Just tell me the truth, Dave. It was sex, David. Just sex, not love, just sex. Well, was it good sex? Don't do this, David. Can you just tell me that, Dave? Was it good? What are you hesitating for? Just tell me. Was it good? Was it good? Was it good? Yes. Number nine. My Best Friend's Wedding. So this means I have four days to make you my new best friend. This happy-go-lucky romantic comedy, complete with a musical number, stars Julia Roberts in her heyday. I, I, I told him the truth. I said that I loved him and I kissed him and this is what's happened. She plays Julianne Potter, a woman whose timing is so bad that it might just be malicious. I, I, I realize this comes at a very inopportune time. After her best friend informs her that he plans on getting married in four days, she realizes she's in love with him and has to stop the wedding. I'm up against a deadline. Me too. I'm getting married tomorrow. That's my point! She attempts to sabotage the pre-wedding activities with bad karaoke and a new boyfriend, even going so far as to declare her love the night before the big day. Timing is everything, folks. I had the strangest dream. I dreamt that some psychopath was trying to break the two of you up. <laughs> Number eight, Bridget Jones' Diary. The, uh, for me, absolutely enormous panties. In this London-based rom-com, Renee Zellweger plays a less than sophisticated single lady looking for love in all the wrong places. Once again, I found myself on my own and going to my mother's annual turkey curry buffet. Every year she tries to fix me up with some bushy-haired middle-aged bore, and I feared this year would be no exception. She works for a publishing company where she's developed a long-standing crush on her boss, Daniel Cleaver, played by Hugh Grant. So, why do you want to work in television? I've got to leave my current job because I've shouted my boss. While her flirtations with her boss seem to be rapidly evolving into something more, she also starts to warm to a childhood friend turned adult nuisance, Mark Darcy. What are you doing here? I've been asking myself the same question. Of course, these two men don't like each other that much, which would put Bridget in an awkward position if there weren't already a ton of other complications involved in this love triangle. Like the fact that both of her love interests seem to have other love interests. I thought you said she was thin. Number seven, The Hunger Games franchise. We could do it, you know. Take off, live in the woods, it's what we do anyway. There's nothing like fighting for your life to get the blood pumping and the love triangles triangulating. Katniss Everdeen, played by Jennifer Lawrence, is a teenaged warrior playing a deadly game. There's 24 of us, Gail, only one comes out. Yeah, and it's gonna be you. 
Okay. Take care of them, Gail. Whatever you do, don't let them starve. She's battling to stay alive in an annual televised event that pits teenagers against each other in a sprawling battle to the death. But she also has to try to manage her love life at the same time while essentially feigning a relationship with another competitor in order to stay alive. Katniss also remains conflicted about the feelings she's developing for a boy she grew up with. So what happens when we get back? I don't know. I guess we try to forget. I don't want to forget. Aside from the state-sanctioned murders happening around them, this Hunger Games love triangle is a typical teenage love story. Now there's no way I'm letting you go. Peter, please, stay. Okay, I'll stay. Number six, The Notebook. You love him? Yeah, I do. I love him very much. This romantic drama may have propelled Ryan Gosling to heartthrob status, but it also gave us a pretty solid love triangle. Still isn't over. In the film, Gosling plays Noah Calhoun, a man who just so happens to be madly in love with Rachel McAdams' character, Allie. I love you. Did you know that? Theirs is a romance that comes with a few rough patches, however, given that they're from two different socioeconomic backgrounds and her rich parents don't approve. Are you breaking up with me? I don't see how it's gonna work. Throw into the mix Ali's newly minted fiance and their passionate love affair becomes much more difficult to navigate. I love you. Will you marry me, Ali? I know I kid around a lot, but I'm crazy about you. Number five, first night. I dare not kiss so lovely a lady. I only have one heart to lose. King Arthur may have figured out how to pull the sword from the stone, but it doesn't appear that he mastered the romance department. A man who fears nothing is a man who loves nothing. And if you love nothing, what joy is there in your life? In this 90s medieval drama, King Arthur is played by a very kingly Sean Connery, who is married to the lovely Lady Guinevere and has just added Sir Lancelot to his inner circle of trusted knights. Extraordinary. Unbelievable. What's your name? Lancelot. Which wouldn't be a problem if Lancelot and Guinevere didn't totally have the hots for each other. To make matters worse, Lancelot keeps saving Guinevere's life while she's bound in a marriage of duty to King Arthur. Just me? The rest is ancient history. <laughs> Number four, Vicky Cristina Barcelona. To uh, your summer in Barcelona. No. Welcome. Salud. What happens when you're an American tourist traveling to Spain for a little excitement and adventure? Well, if you're Scarlett Johansson's character in this Woody Allen flick, you're likely to end up in a polyamorous relationship. By now, she and Juan Antonio and Maria Elena had become lovers. Johansson plays Christina, an American 20-something vacationing in Barcelona, when she and her friend Vicky happen upon the lustful Juan. We'll eat well, we'll drink good wine, we'll make love. Yeah, who, who exactly is going to make love? Hopefully the three of us. While her friend Vicky backs out of his threesome offer, Christina embarks on a romantic relationship with Juan before learning about his former wife. Siempre buscándome en todas las mujeres. No, eso no es verdad, Marilena. Not to be deterred, she ends up living with both Juan and the unstable Maria Elena, played by Penelope Cruz. It's an arrangement that actually seems to work for all parties involved, at least for a while. Well, I wouldn't be upset about it. You know, I never want to get in the way. It wouldn't. It wouldn't upset me at all. I know you wouldn't be upset. Same way I get this warm feeling when I hear you both locked in passion every night. I listen and I'm happy. Number three, closer. Is she in love with you? I don't know. No. Are you in love with him? I hardly know him. Infidelity and indecisiveness seem to be the name of the game in this romantic drama, starring Julia Roberts and Natalie Portman. As Anna, Roberts plays a photographer who embarks on an affair with Jude Law's Dan. <laughs> Congratulations. You're a divorcee. Double divorcee. Mm. 
The problem, aside from the fact that Anna gets married over the course of the affair, is that Dan is also in a relationship. I've been with Anna. I'm in love with her. We've been seeing each other for a year. He's dating Natalie Portman's character, Alice, but obviously isn't entirely happy with her. You did love me. <laughs> I always love you, I hate hurting you. As it happens, Anna leaves her husband Larry for Dan, but winds up reconciling with him later. Look at me. Tell me you're not in love with me. I'm not in love with you. But that's not before the question arises of whether Larry did or didn't sleep with Alice. This is more like a love square than a triangle. That's the spirit. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty. Now f off and die. Number two, Casablanca. Here's looking at you, kid. While this film may be remembered for its iconic dialogue, the love story at its heart shouldn't be overlooked either. After all, it's Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman in a classic that helped define an era. can on fire, or is it my heart pounding? In this romantic drama, Bogey plays Rick Blaine, a club owner living in Casablanca, Morocco. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. All is well and good until his ex-flame strolls back into his life. But this time, her husband is in tow, and they're in need of his help to thwart the Nazis. The explanation is quite simple. Love, it seems, has triumphed over virtue. Thank you. Not so fast, Louis. He's reluctant at first, but seems to warm up after she lets him know that she still carries a torch for him. Kiss me. Kiss me as if it were the last time. Being the gentleman that Rick is, however, he just can't stand to see her throw her marriage away. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. But what about us? We'll always have Paris. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. You know what I want for us? There's someone else. I fall in love with someone else. You gonna tell me to stay away from your girl? Well, if I had to do that, she wouldn't be my girl. Hmm. Well, then I guess you've got nothing to worry about, do you? Cyclops. have a whole city full of women, you know, at your feet. You could go out with anyone you want to. Why did you have to go and hone in on the first woman I've ever had any real romantic feeling for? Oh, wait a minute. Listen to what you're saying. You're telling me that I should have been sensitive to the possibility that a Catholic priest had a crush on my secret girlfriend. And here's one dishonorable mention as well. I know she's in love with you. Oh, good. But she's in love with me, too. Number one, The Graduate. I'll get undressed now, is that all right? Sure. You know what's more difficult than having a relationship with two people at one time? Well, that's a little hard to say. Sleeping with your girlfriend's mother. You go to hell. You go straight to hell, Mrs. Robinson. Do you think I'm proud of myself? Do you think I'm proud of this? I wouldn't know. Well, I am not. This classic comedy drama follows Dustin Hoffman as Benjamin Braddock, a recent college graduate who engages in an illicit affair with Mrs. Robinson, the wife of a family friend. Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> this would be scandalous enough on its own, but things get even trickier when Benjamin also starts a relationship with Mrs. Robinson's daughter. The point is I don't love your wife, I love your daughter, sir. It is one of the grimier love triangles, but at least we know cougars were active and on the prowl way back in the 60s. Mrs. Robinson, I can't do this. You what? This is all terribly wrong. Do you find me undesirable? Oh, no, Mrs. Robinson. I think, I think you're the most attractive of all my parents' friends. I mean that. I find you desirable, but I... For God's sake, can you imagine my parents? Can you imagine what they would say if they just saw us here in this room right now? Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite movie love triangle? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. At least stay for a birthday drink with me and Bridge, huh? Bye, Bridget.